should I have a YouTube channel if I plan on living the nomad life? Do you feel you are treated differently or discriminated against? Hello guys, another day. I know it's been a few since I made a video, but today touches on something that um, I felt was really important to talk about, and I'm kind of surprised that this question has not come up uh, so markedly until right now. So I got an email from someone, and I'm not going to give their uh, I'm not going to give their full name, but or I'm not going to give their name. I'm just going to read the email to you. So this person emailed me a couple days ago and said, uh, "Hi Jay, I wanted to ask you this a long time ago." Should I have a YouTube channel if I plan on living the nomad life? I am putting together my schoolie, uh, a school bus, for those that don't know what a schoolie is, it's building out a school bus, uh, which is why I left the comment on your last video about seeing your build. And one of my concerns is color in the community. I'm asking you, uh, because you're a very handsome gay man, thank you, do you feel you are treated differently or discriminated against? I am a black man who wants to live in a schoolie with my cat. Now that I've read this, uh, I'm not sure I should have sent it, but I'm, I'm just kind of nervous about asking. Uh, thank you for taking the time to read this. So I'm glad that this question came up because I think it's ever present on the mind of a lot of people uh, that may be on the verge of whether or not they should do a YouTube channel. And then specifically, if you have the additional, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get some haters that, of course, will be like, oh, why are you talking about this? We don't want to hear about this. Hey, I don't care. Hit the road if you don't like it. But I know that not only do you have the challenge of thinking about whether or not you want to make a YouTube channel if you live this way, but then there is the additional added element that's in our minds if you're a gay person or if you're a person of color or maybe, let's say, someone that's disabled or any number of other things that then um, puts you into what maybe most society might see as a marginalized category or a minority category or whatever. Or, or another one might be trans, you know, uh, so someone that's trans. So all these uh, things are an additional layer of consideration whenever you are thinking about doing a YouTube channel. And I am kicking myself because I forgot to put on a timer. Hold on, let me put on a timer. If I don't put on a timer, I will sit here and go on and on all day long. And I know that you guys definitely don't want that. So let me put on a timer. Hold on. Ah, technology. Okay, so we're at two and a half minutes right now. All right, so these are additional things that we have to think about when we have those additional uh, societal differences in our lives rather than just being heterosexual. Now, you may think that's ridiculous, but it's true. So here's how I responded to this person. I said, um, hi, don't be nervous. It's a good question that you asked. Unfortunately, only you can answer the question of if you should do a YouTube channel about your experiences. I think it would be interesting to follow, uh, but not everyone is cut out for publicizing their private life in such a way like this. So, and then I said, to answer your other question, I have dealt with the usual homophobic uh, bullshit, but I'm a tough mother when it comes to dealing with those types, even in real life. So it doesn't bother me as it would many people in this circumstance. Um, I, I, and then I said, because it's true, I found this to be often the case throughout my life, my adult life, I rally in a confrontation. I don't run away from confrontation, I rally during a confrontation. Uh, but most people tend to shrink away from confrontation. Uh, so I, and so then the rest of my emails, I said, so I would imagine most people would not choose to put their private lives out there like I do. And I, I'm pretty certain that not even just as a gay man, but even heterosexuals that do this kind of uh, public, uh, you know, publicizing their life as banners or RVers, most of them, uh, or a lot of them, won't, won't even talk about their private lives. Because I think people are very afraid of judgment, they're very afraid of... Um, pushback, they're very afraid of maybe their private lives being compromised if they put out too much information. And so I think a lot of people just naturally do not um, move towards the kind of transparency that I've tried to use on my channel, because I'm, I'm all about transparency, I mean, to, to, to a great extent. I mean, obviously there are some things I'm not going to talk about when it gets into, you know, people's individual details and names and things like that. I'm not going to necessarily get into that. But my point is, is I've watched a lot of YouTubers 
over the years before I ever started my channel. And one of the things that always appealed to me was YouTubers talking about their personal lives because then you can become very, uh, you become very invested in the person, not just about what the background is. So obviously the background is this, right? It's, it's living this way. This is the background. This is the set in a sense. But the reality of it is, is there's only so much about this that I can talk about, right? There's only so much content when it comes to this kind of life, although some would disagree. But it's true. There's only so much of this. I can only talk about batteries so many times. I can only talk about, you know, um, water so many times. I can only talk about the build so many times. I can only talk about Stanley and Magnum so many times in and of itself as limited subjects. So that means the rest of the time, you got to have other things to talk about. And, I, and, and so it's not just about content, but when I was watching other YouTubers over the years, I found that I really enjoyed the personal aspect of their lives being brought into their videos with their daily vlogs, that I really enjoyed that. And since I really enjoy that when I watch it in other people's channels, and not just RV channels, but just you know channels of all kinds that are not even RV related. And so I've noticed that when I watch those kinds of channels, I tend to come back to the channels where I get a little bit more of a snapshot of the person's uh, life, their personal lives, and not just videos about the backdrop or about the set. So this channel is obviously set up to be both. It's like obviously we're going to talk about this because you can't help but talk about what's right in front of you that you see. But at the same time, my personal life, if I want to talk about it, I'm going to because that's that's what I find interesting in other YouTubers' channels. Uh, so to address the, I mean, to kind of talk about that question, I think I kind of answered it already. But uh, my point is, is not everyone is cut out for the the crap that comes with doing this. As far as putting up with people's BS, putting up with well, specifically as a gay man or as a as a. a person of color would put up with or someone that's trans or someone that's uh, disabled you get we get an additional level of BS on top of all the regular criticism so if all the regular criticism is oh you're homeless oh you're an e-beggar oh you're whatever 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 stack up the reasons that people or the criticisms that people have right those are the normal criticisms for someone that's you know heterosexual white whatever not disabled but then you tack, you tack on the additional elements of if you're gay, you're trans, you're, you're black, you're disabled, or whatever else, you stack that, and then we get additional crap above and beyond what the normal people that live this way get as it is, right? Um, <laughs> so that's not for everybody. Not everybody's built to take those kind of attacks all the time or those kinds of criticisms, right? And so I get that. And so I think if, if you're going to go into having a YouTube channel, you do have to be very honest with yourself about that kind of stuff. Do you really want to put up with that? Do you really want to read nasty comments every day? Uh, do you, uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it, that's, a, that's a personal decision that each, each person has to make that is considering doing this, taking this stuff. That's why I can't really answer it for this person that asked the question. I can't answer whether you should have a YouTube channel. Uh, my only answer would be is yes, I f would find it interesting to watch your journey, but that doesn't mean that you necessarily want to put up with all the crap that comes with it, right? So that's a very personalized decision. The other thing I would mention about this, I guess to answer your question about, the question was, have you dealt with, uh, where is it? Where is it in the email? Have you dealt with any, um, or do you feel that you've been treated any differently or discriminated against? Um, I wouldn't go, well, I mean, the term discriminate, or using the language discriminated against, um, I know it happens to people. I don't personally like to use that language when it comes to me because I think, to me, that feels like uh, it's taking my power away and I'm becoming a victim. And I just refuse to let that happen. So I don't personally use the language discriminated against because I'm going to get right up in a mother's face if they try that with me. I will, and I do. And that's not just on camera. I get right up in people's faces if they try this stuff with me right face to face. In real life, I'll do it. So to me, I don't ever feel the, the language of discriminated against because I push right back and I push back hard. Um, 
And I actually love it when that happens. I love it when that happens because I love to watch some stupid, small-minded, small-minded individual walk right into the trap, right? Because they never know I'm gay. They never suspect that. And so they'll start running their mouth and they'll say something stupid and I'm just sitting there relishing it like, go ahead, go ahead, go right into the trap. And then I have them and then I just give it right back to them. And then they're always, then they're always stammering and they don't know what to do because they of course had no idea I was gay. And so once I catch them in a trap like that, Oh man, I make them squirm. I don't let them off easy. I make them squirm. Because I'm like, if you opened your mouth and showed your ignorance, I am going to put you in your place. I am just going to do it. That's just how I am. That's how I'm wired. So I, it's not like I'm going out looking for a fight, but if you're going to bring the fight, you're going to bring the argument, you're going you're gonna to show how small-minded you are, I'm going to humiliate you. That's just the way it is, because I think that's what you deserve. Now, I know a lot of people are going to think that's really childish of me, or they're going to think that's uh, immature or whatever else like that. But I think the only way you deal with bigots is you expose them. You expose them and you humiliate them. And that's how you deal with people that are bigoted. That's the only way that works, in my opinion. Shrinking away from them, running away from them, which I did a lot as a kid. As a kid, I did that a lot. So shrinking from them and running away from them, all it does is give them more power. When you get in their face and you put them in their place, that's what takes away their power. It really, truly does. The only other thing I'm going to mention, this video is already at almost, well, we're already at 10 minutes, so I'm going to wrap. The only last thing I'm going to mention about this question is that I have noticed a demographic shift in my analytics on this channel since I started. And what I'm talking about is, is in our analytics on this channel, we can see all the back-end stuff of uh, the gender of the viewer, um, the age of the viewer, the location of the viewer. Now, I don't mean individually. Like, I'm not, I can't sit here and see Joan is coming from Kansas on, you know, whatever, and she's 45. But what I mean is as a, as like a pie chart or as a breakdown, I can see, ex you know, what percentage are male watching my videos, what percentage are female, what age range, uh, you know, what people, are, you know, how many are 35, how many are 25, how many are 65, and so on. And it shows all those kinds of details, including it'll show me if how many people are watching my videos on big screen TVs, how many are watching my videos on tablets, how many are watching my videos on laptop computers, all that kind of stuff, right? And so since the beginning of my channel, I have seen a marked, a marked uh, demographic shift in my videos. And I think it has to do with the fact of me being honest about who I am on this channel. And so when this channel started, it was much more heavily men that watched this channel at the very beginning, right? I think it was like 55% men, 45% women or something like that. But now it's shifted. And I'll let you put two and two together here and I'll let you figure out why that is. Uh, I know why it is, but I'll let you logically put together the equation of why my demographics have shifted on this channel and that's okay you know what I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not so if if some people a certain demographic are threatened by that and they want to run out the door bye so you know what the demographics have shifted and I obviously have a different mix of uh, you know the genders that watch my channel now it's it's, it's flipped but that's all right, you know? I'm very happy for the people that are here, and it doesn't mean that there are no men watching this channel. Obviously, there are still a lot of men watching this channel, but the percentages have just flip-flopped, you know? The percentages of men versus women have definitely changed on this channel over recent months. So, I hope that answers the question that this person uh, emailed to me about, you know, as far as whether or not they should start a YouTube channel and the, the drawbacks of doing so. And hopefully this answers your question, and now I'm way over my time because I didn't want this video to be a long one. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap here. I'm going to show you the animals, and we're going to get out of here, okay? All right. Moreno? What you doing? I know, we're going to show Stanley first today instead of second. How's that? Oh, you like those, you like those, you like those butt spanks, don't you? He does look at him, he loves it. He loves it. Ah, ah, careful, 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 careful. Be nice.
All right. <laughs> and there's Mr. Magnum. Hey, buddy. We haven't made it to the park yet, so he's in his um, usual resting mode until we go to the park. Okay, guys, that's it. That's a wrap for another video. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. All right? Bye. If they say why